Two years after The Wheel of Time started filming season two, we finally have a trailer. Amazon dropped the season two trailer for Wheel of Time, and there is a ton to break down. We can start to piece together some of the plot of the season and what's going to change from the books, what's staying the same, and what's an improvement over season one. Let's break it all down. Make sure to like the video so YouTube shares this stuff with the world, and you can always see the current spoiler level right here. But let's go ahead and dive into the season two trailer. Let's start by talking about the music in the trailer, which also happens to be the reason I can't show it to you in full. The song is by Halsey, and it's a song called Control, which is a hauntingly good song. I highly suggest checking it out and the full song lyrics because they're meaningful. So why did they choose this song for the trailer? I certainly don't think it's by accident. The song describes what I believe are some of the major themes of season two. And as we start to break down the trailer, you'll see these themes come to the forefront. The song vividly describes inner demons and fighting for control of oneself. The very last line of the song is who is in control. I think you'll see this as we take a look at the trailer, but it's certainly worth mentioning as we go forward. Now, the trailer opens with this shot of Moraine that we previously had seen in a still clip. She is looking into the distance, and at first glance, it looks like many of the people behind her are looking at her. But I actually think they're staring at the same thing she is. Whatever it is, it isn't that crazy because the vendors go right back to vending. So it doesn't hold their attention for that long. But I wonder if Moraine is seeing the arrival of someone or a group of people, perhaps the Omerlin coming to Kyrian. This will come up here again in a minute. The next shot is of the White Tower facing South Harbor. We can clearly see the Ogier Grove right here, the novice and accepted quarters here, and then the Tower Library right here. For more on the White Tower, check out this video right here that tells you everything you wanted to know about the White Tower and more. In these shots of the White Tower, though, you can see some people walking around the colonnades, including somebody here in blue. But I don't think this is Moraine, however, as I don't believe we're going to see her back in the tower this season after her banishment last year. Now, the next scene is of Moraine crying in the bath. The voiceover is speaking of making choices and living with the consequences of them, of which I don't think she's referring to her banishment, but more her loss of ability to channel Sidar at the end of season one when facing a Shamael with Rand at the Eye of the World. I think this fits the narrative theme of the season in that she's having to learn how to still be focused on her mission, but without the use of the one power. It's a truly humanizing arc for Moraine. It's going to be exciting to watch. The next shot here is of Rand standing in what looks like a desert area. My guess is, is that this is part of a dream sequence and could potentially be the Aya Waste. I would not be shocked if this was some foreshadowing of the events of season three. Now here you can clearly see the rising sun of Kyrian on his back. If you are not a book reader, Kyrian is a nation that we did not visit in the first season, but it is Moraine's home nation and the capital city, also called Kyrian, is a probable location for season two. I believe this scene happens while Rand is in Kyrian and the dream sequence might be a tie-in with another sequence that we will see later and a character that is closely tied to Rand. Now, this shot makes it appear that Rand is alone here, which further drives home the probability that this is a dream sequence. His facial expressions look as though he's preparing himself for something he has to face. Now, these next couple shots are a couple quick images of Moraine holding a knife and a fade screaming at her. This is obviously Moraine without the one power facing a fade, which can now kill her quite easily. We're going to see more of this scene in a bit, though, I think. Now, the voiceover is Moraine saying that they did not kill the Dark One, as Rand believed at the end of season one, but rather that they released him, which leads to this shot here of Faris Faris, who is playing the Dark One, but we really know him to be a Shamael, the leader of the Forsaken. He is smiling, and then, of course, he apparates like he's Voldemort. All joking aside, I've seen some assume that this is a dream sequence, but I'm not so sure. This could simply be a Shamael traveling using the true power, something that I doubt will be explained this season, but you never know. Here we have Egwene in her novice dress practicing some weaves, it appears. Now, I believe this is spirit that she is channeling, that or air. If you had not noticed, though, we have color-coded weaves this season, which is a major upgrade. One of the things that I was massively disappointed in season one with was the weaves and the way channeling looked. Now, in terms of where she is, I've seen some say that she's in the accepted testing chamber that we saw in the JordanCon video and that we'll see later in this trailer but I don't think so. There is light coming from above in that chamber, and this one is very dark and lit only with torches. I think this may be another chamber in the White Tower where Egwene is training. Now here we have a shot of Leandrin looking very Leandrin-like. 
The song plays the lyrics, I'm meaner than my demons, right as we see her on screen. I think that we're going to see more from Leandrin this year than you might expect. She was an unexpected highlight in season one, to me at least. Kate Fleetwood did an amazing job making her character uh, one that I love to hate, and her performance was excellent. There was more to her that was hinted last season about a man in North Harbor, and as you see we keep going in the trailer, I think we'll learn more about that and her motivations. Now, very ominously, we get this next shot of what we know to be the Dark Friends social. We have seen this previously, but in the other shots, we had a Shamael sitting down at the table. In this clip, you see him here on the side walking with a small girl, which is extremely odd. If I brighten the clip, you can see that she has brownish hair and a reddish shirt on. Now, we're going to come back to this girl because I believe we're going to see her again later. But in this shot, I do believe this right here to be pot on Fane and a small departure from what we see of him in the books. I think that at this point, he is still on Team Dark friend. It's going to be interesting to see what's going on with his plot line because if this happens at the beginning of the season and we know that he has the Horn of Valir with him that he took last season, his presence here would be weird because he's supposedly on the run from the group that we saw that we'll see in a second chasing the Horn. So I don't know what they're doing with him yet. We'll have to wait and see. We then move to this clip of Nynaeve setting up the perfect cue for Kanye West's power. No one should have that much power. No one man should have Missed opportunity, Amazon. All joking aside, though, she appears to be in the White Tower wearing an apron, probably in the kitchen. The question I have is who is she talking to? At first, I thought this was Varen, but she has gray streaks in her hair from the previous clip that we saw of her. It's possible that it's Alana with her hair done differently, or it could just be some random person in the kitchens. It does seem an odd thing for Nynaeve to be saying that if it's to a random person. So unless she's pissed about working in the kitchens, or maybe she's talking about the Omerlin, I'm not sure. We will have to wait and see. See, let me know what you think she's talking about in the comments of the video. Now here we have a Shamael channeling what I think are flows of Earth based on the greenish color. My guess here is that he is freeing Lanfear. We know that it's likely he's going to be freeing the other Forsaken. We know Lanfear is in this season. And of course the next shot is of a woman covered in blood rising from the ground. I think it's a safe bet to say that this is Lanfear. Now my guess how her character is going to play out is that we won't see her face when she is awakened. For those that know her story though, we will know that the character hanging around Rand that we're going to see in a minute here is Lanfear, but it won't be obvious to new watchers of the show Show, and that will be a reveal later in the story. The only downside to this is that it's been announced that Natasha O'Keefe would be playing Lanfear, so that cuts out of the bag, but maybe they're counting on not everybody following the show like that. The next shot is of some Damani wearing their ball gag pacifiers and channeling. A couple of big things of note here. We have seen in the past that the Suldom appear to be wearing these bracers on their wrists. That's supposed to be like the bracelet from the Idom in the books. It's interesting to see how the channeling from the Damani is only coming from their wrists rather than from like all around around like the eyes that I do. It's interesting visually. It's cool that you can tell the difference, but I'm not sure how it fits from a lore perspective. Like, is the one power coming from somewhere else that it's only going into the Damani's wrists? Who knows? We'll see how it plays out. Now, this next shot of the Damani channeling flows of air at the Shinarans is awesome. I love the visual representations and the fact that the Shan Chan appear to be so menacing. I, I think that's great. We see here Uno in what looks like Masima and maybe Ingtar being blown back by the air. Perrin is also thrown back in this shot. Now I think this scene is where the Shan Chan blitz the Shinarans, Perrin, and Loyal who have been likely looking for the horn in a town near Falm. We're going to see more of this group here a bit later in the trailer. The next shot is the opening of a chamber in the White Tower that we see in the next shot is the accepted testing chamber. Nynaeve is walking in wearing accepted robes and we can see one of the arches directly in the doorway. Now, when we get inside the chamber, we see three Aes Sedai behind Nynaeve. On the left, it appears to be Shiriam in the middle, Liana, and on the far right of the shot is Leandrin. Also of note in this shot is that the arches on the sides don't appear to be total arches, but rather columns. I'm not sure if it's just the angle or the blackness in the shot, but it certainly looks that way. Also, this chamber appears to be open to the sunlight above, which is a change from the books. In the books, the chamber is buried deep in the foundations of the tower, not with skylights. That being said, I don't think that change really matters in all reality, and maybe they thought this looked better. Here we get a shot of the Shinarans and Perrin probably at what is the beginning of their hunt for the horn. The terrain reminds me of what we saw of Shinar in season one, and we know from the interviews that were played at WatCon that the early part of the season has Perrin and the Shinarans on horseback quite a bit. As we get this shot of Perrin seemingly riding in that group, it's important to notice that he is wearing a sword. 
Now, it's probably given to him because he needed a weapon for the journey. It is odd seeing Perrin with a sword, though. I'm fairly certain that we see him with an axe or a hammer later in the season in some of the promo shots that we've seen. So it doesn't worry me too much, but it's just odd to see. Here we get Rand and Natasha O'Keefe getting fairly close. We obviously know that she's playing Lanfear in the story, and this seems to occur before Rand gets his fancy clothes in Kyrian. My guess is that this happens sometime before Rand arrives in Kyrian. They appear to have been together for a while, and the odds are that Rand does not know that she's one of the Forsaken. Now, this certainly seems to be the Selene plotline, but it may just be that Lanfear is Selene without a disguise, something I'd be in favor of just to make things more simple for storytelling, so we could connect the two characters' arcs. Here we have Rand in nice clothing, walking down a hallway in what I would guess is Kyrian. Now, we've got someone in blue at the end of the hallway, which could be a blue Aes Sedai, as my suspicion from the trailer is that Swan has visited Kyrian with Loghain, but more on that in a moment. Here we get a shot of Tar Valon with Dragon Mount ominous in the background and on the correct side of the river as well. This is the Tower Library, which means that this is South Harbor right here, and Dragon Mount is on the western side of the river, which is where it should be. Here we have Moraine galloping away in the night, likely after the attack in the night by the Murdral. And then we get Lan being stoic. Shocker. The voiceover leads to this shot of Moraine talking to likely Lan, saying that protecting Rand and guiding him is the only thing that matters. Also likely arguing with Lan that she should get help rather than just chasing Rand on her own is my guess. We then pop to this shot of Swan saying that you can't control him. That I think is meant to seem like it's a part of that same shot. It's always a trick with trailers, but they are often misleading. I don't think that that's the same scene. The shot of Swan is during the day, judging by the windows behind her, and it likely comes in the throne room of Kyrian, which we're going to see more of in a second. In a later shot, she's seen here talking to Rand, but I don't think she's talking to Rand in this shot either, but rather Moraine. We'll have to wait and see if Moraine and Swan are going to meet again. I would assume so based on the context. Now here in this shot, we have Rand channeling fire and you can see the black threads weaving through his weaves that are clearly the taint. Now, based on some of the dialogue, I think that Rand is struggling with his control of channeling and with the madness, and I think there's potential for him to burn something down or cause damage, which only furthers his guilt. He does look very worried here as the fire weaves seem to be moving erratically. Here we get Perrin and a wolf, which is hopefully Hopper. We then see Perrin's eyes turn from brown to yellow, which is, I think, how they're going to handle that, at least this season. Perrin's eyes appear to turn yellow when he's wolfing out, so we'll need to see how they handle that in the show for, like, the full run, but at least at the beginning beginning, that seems to be how it's going to work. We also hear the voiceover on this scene of who I think is far as far as as a Shamael saying, you know, you have something inside you while we see Perrin and then later Rand strangling Moraine while channeling. Also, while Rand slams Moraine against the wall, it's easy to miss without the subtitles on, but there is a voice whispering, kill them all, which sounds very much like the taint whispering in Rand's head, or at least we're meant to think that. Here in this shot, we get a very short clip of Egwene looking beaten and abused while wearing the eye dom. Now, I have a feeling that this is going to be horrible to see. Not that I want that per se, but it's important that we think of it that way. So in a way, I'm glad this might be horrible to watch. Here we see Nynaeve covered in blood and holding what looks like some of her hair in her hand. Now, this is clearly right after her accepted test as we... We'll see again here in a minute, but we can see the open skylight above her, which again indicates that room. The look on her face is clearly that she's horrified, and I have a feeling that the accepted tests will be equally hard to watch, which is, again, honestly good for the realism of the show. Here we see the ruby-hilted dagger back on the table in front of Matt, and he appears to be forced to stare at it. At first, I thought this was in the same place as the Dark Friend Social, but after a further look, it's very clearly a different fireplace. It almost implies that he's in the White Tower, which of course opens up a number of questions for me, because how does he have the dagger back, especially after we saw Fane with it at the end of episode eight? I have lots of questions, but it does feel like the same narrative that Matt is struggling with the dagger internally, in the same way that Rand is struggling with madness, Perrin is struggling with being a wolf. This shot is super cool in my opinion, though. We have Lanfear behind Rand as he channels what looks like weaves of fire as he intently stares into the distance. Again, I love the way these weaves look compared to a year ago. It is such a big improvement. We then get a moment I was not expecting in the trailer or even really in this season. We get Rand here talking to Loghain and asking about how to control the one power. At least that's what I assume he's asking about. I actually think it might be a smart idea to have Rand and Loghain meet this early. It gives Loghain more of an arc and involvement. 
in the season. The question is, is if Loghain is going to take the place of Asmodian from the books in that he's the person that teaches Rand to channel. I don't love that idea as for one, I love the dynamic of one of the Forsaken helping Rand. I always thought that was cool and I wish we had more of it. And if Loghain was the one teaching him, it would not explain how Rand would learn some more complex weaves because how did Loghain learn them? The other question about this scene is how are they meeting? I don't believe this is in the White Tower. I don't think Rand is going to go back there. I think that this is probably Kyrian. We saw Rand wearing the same thing earlier, walking down that hallway. So my guess is that we are seeing the Amerlin on a tour, parading around Loghain as being captured and gentle to all the nations. And she takes this opportunity to see Rand. So this is likely in Kyrian, which I think makes sense and successfully combines a few plot lines. The next shot is telling of some of the changes that are coming for this season. This is very clearly a shot of the Shan Chan, specifically Suroth and Ishamayel riding up on this town looking like Xerxes from 300. Now, there's a bunch to break down from this shot, but first, let's just acknowledge that this is the type of shot that was missing once COVID took hold in season one. There are lots of extras here. I didn't count, but I would guess... 50 or 60. This is something that they could not have done at the end of season one, and it frankly shows. But let's talk about the Sean Chan. They look awesome, menacing, completely different from anything else, and they also look awful, like awful people. Think about these slaves carrying that entire platform. That, that's pretty nuts. How far did they have to carry it? Like miles? On the platform, though, we have Suroth seated, which we'll see more of in the next shot. And then we have a Shamael right here on the right, standing next to her, which we have also seen before. But more ominously, we have all of the people thrown on the ground. Ironically, they are all either wearing white or they look like they're in their small clothes, other than a few of them. We have Perrin right here, wearing what we saw him in earlier. Then we have Loyal right here. But more scary is the fact that right here, it looks like we have a dead Uno. My guess is that the scene where we saw Uno about to get hit by the Sean Chan with a baseball bat or whatever that was, was actually his walking dead Negan moment. R.I.P. Uno. If indeed the Sean Chan are that brutal and do kill off a fan favorite character in this season, that goes a long way towards making them a villain that we love to hate and having real stakes and impact to what happens to our characters. But let me add this. What if one of these Damani here is Egwene? What if Egwene was forced to kill the Shinarans or hurt the people she knows? Not that I'm rooting for trauma, but that certainly ramps up the stakes and makes this feel like there are real consequences and real things happening. Here we get that close up of Suroth and her fingers and then this shot of her, which I would guess is of her voice, and then a Shamael standing next to her on top of their Xerxes dais. I love the distinctive style that the Shan Chan have. They definitely feel apart from the world that they invaded. Now, it's worth talking about a Shamael here for a second. This is an obvious change from the books, and one that, at least on the surface, I think makes sense. In the books, he very much works from the shadows, but apparently in season two, he is taking a much larger role. There is something that doesn't quite sit right with me, though, and it's hard to define why, but I do think it can make sense. I, I guess it's just one of those things I'm going to have to wait and see it play out. It just feels weird to me. There were a few things, though, from season one that I thought turned out fine, and there were a few things that I thought were bad choices after seeing them. This is just goes into one of those things I'm going to have to wait and make a judgment later. Here we have High Lord Turok opening the case that contains the Horn of Valir. It's really cool to see that this will not only be in the show, but a focal point, and we get our first glimpses of the horn as well here, which is really, really cool. He then says, the whole world will be ours after having it open, which again speaks to the gravity of having the Horn of Valir in your possession. Again, I also go back to the costuming here. The antlers or whatever those are supposed to be on Turok look super cool. And I do hope they end up being practical for fighting. They look a little weird. But he's supposed to be a blade master and we'll see more of him later. But I want him to be a true badass warrior, not just a guy in a costume. In this next shot, though, we get another of the Damani in action. And again, you can see the weaves only around her wrists, where the Suldam behind her is wearing on her bracers. The fire seems to spout from the ground, which is a better effect than what we saw in season one. For example, compare this scene here of Alana channeling during the attack on the Aes Sedai camp. Now, see how much better this looks. We can also see Egwene and Elaine here in this shot, and very briefly, the way gate off to the right. This is very likely when they arrive out of the ways and Egwene is captured by the Shanchan. 
Now this next shot I love. Look at this look on Egwene's face as she channels what looks like weaves of air to block the fire coming from the Damani. She looks like a total badass and I cannot wait to see more of Egwene. Can I stress how much of an improvement the weaves are from season one? This next shot is super quick, but of another explosion of weaves emanating from a screaming Nynaeve. My guess is, is that this is from her accepted test. There are a few Trollocs that were obliterated by her weaves. This shot has a very dreamlike feel to it, so she appears to be back in the two rivers. Here we get some white cloaks charging on their horses through a thick mist. Now hopefully they are not just charging to hop up on a wall, but is that mist what I think it is? I do think it is. Well, time peeps, I think this is the mist from the Horn of Valir, and it's getting used in this shot. I am very excited to see how that is adapted on the screen. Here we have a shot of Leandrin at the ring forging thing that we saw in season one, where Karenny's ring was melted when she died. Now I have a number of questions about this, but is she forging new rings? Possibly for Nynaeve since she passed her test. Maybe more for Egwene and Elaine to pass as I said I when they leave the tower with her. This shot leaves me with a lot more questions than it does answers. So again, we'll wait and see. All right, back to this girl and Perrin. We know that they're together because we see them in the same shot here on the bottom left when Perrin's in the shot, but this is the exact same girl from the Dark Friend Social. She's wearing the same thing. She's carrying around what looks like a play sword, and there's a horse and a cart in the background right here. My guess is that this happens when the Shinarans and Perrin stop somewhere along their hunt, and Perrin ends up playing with a local. The question is, is why was she at the Dark Friend Social? Is she a Dark Friend? Is she being used for information by Dark Friends? Again, uh, more questions than answers. And here we get Swan and Moraine exchanging some kisses and what appears to me to be in the White Tower again. I don't think that this is them back in the tower together this season, but very possibly a flashback to the past. This season would be a great time to introduce their earlier lives and motivations and about how they started this quest together. Here we get Egwene and Nynaeve embracing for a hug. Not much to say about that, other than Egwene is wearing her novice stuff in an apron. And here we have Nynaeve during her accepted test. Now this is Liana channeling flows of spirit into the arches. You can see the one power moving through those arches, which is a really cool effect. Effect. The voiceover is of Egwene, and it leads to this clip of her talking to Elaine, where she says, If our friends are in trouble, why would we stay here? Elaine's look reeks of Elaine here, and even as she's covered in ash from likely cleaning the stoves or hearths in the kitchen, Kier Coveney is very much Elaine to me. My guess is, is that this is Egwene convincing Elaine to come with them after Rand. I will be interested to see why Elaine wants to come, given that she has not met Rand yet and she doesn't have her little crush on him like she does in the books. We'll have to see how it plays out because we do see from the earlier shots that Elaine definitely does go to foam, so she comes. Here we get what appears to be Moraine storming out of an inn towards what looks like a broken city outside. It's hard to tell where that is. It certainly does look like a ruin. My first thought was that this was Shadar Logoth, but it would be odd given the trajectory of the story. My other thoughts were that it was the topless towers of Kyrian, still broken from the Aeo War, but this just looks too much of a ruin for that. So it's actually might just be that it's too dark to tell what's outside. We have Maureen's voiceover saying that we don't have any conception of the power that they wield, something that we've heard before. I think she's referencing the Forsaken, but it's possible she's talking about another group too. We have Lan then saying to Moraine that she cannot do it by herself. I think this is part of the plot line of Moraine trying to pretend like she can carry on as though things are the same when they're clearly not, and Lan wants to help her. We get this next shot of Avienda veiling up with Perrin in the background, and you can see the blood on her head. My guess is that she is getting rescued by Perrin rather than Gaul, and I know that'll be a bummer for a lot of people, but I think that's this scene, and I bet you they're about to kill some white cloaks. And the reason I would bet that is that in this very next scene, we have Avienda killing a bunch of white cloaks. I am very much hoping that the fight scenes are all as quality as the blood snow scene from episode 7 of season 1. We were seriously missing some great fight choreography outside of just a very few moments in season 1, so hopefully this is another area where there could be an upgrade over season 1. Here we have Nynaeve sparring with what is probably two warders. I know there's been a lot of controversy about this scene because why in the hell would Nynaeve be doing this? But I'm sure other characters in the show will probably be asking that same question of Nynaeve. Maybe Nynaeve just wants to learn how to defend herself if she can't channel. Nynaeve often does things that other characters find odd. So to me, that's very plausible. It could also just be her trying to exercise to beat her block, maybe? Here we have a scene that I can't wait to see. 
It appears to be Lan fighting two Murdral at once in the same scene we saw Moraine being attacked and running away from earlier. Now, we didn't get enough badassery from Lan in season one, so this is a welcome sight for me. The next shot is of Tarvalon at night, and even though they show us what appears to be Leandrin moving through the city at night in the next shot, what I am hoping is that this is a wide shot moving directly to Matt gambling in an inn and getting crazy lucky. I really hope that we get to see Matt's luck kick into overdrive this season as he tries to leave Tarvalon. Now, here we get Leandrin, very obviously hiding herself, walking through the streets of Tarvalon. While I don't think this is her heading to the Waygate with the girls, I do think it's rather her sneaking off to see her secret guy that Maureen mentioned last season. We'll see. Here we have hot emo Rand staring out the window, or looking at his shirtless reflection in the mirror because he finds himself hot like the rest of us find him, maybe? Here's a short clip of Nynaeve jumping out of the arches after presumably completing her acceptance test. She has blood all over her. It almost looks like she was stabbed. I have a feeling that these tests are going to be brutal, as they were described in the books. Here we get Perrin presumably putting an axe into a white cloak at Falm. It's hard to say who this is back here, but we only get half of her head. But it does look an awful like the top half of Egwene's head. And it also appears to be happening in Falm, so maybe. Speaking of Egwene, here is a brutal shot of her wearing the eye dom, blood on her face, and crying out. What if she really was forced to hurt somebody that she knew or cared about? This is probably how I would expect her to react to that. Here we have Rand looking surprised that he is chained to the wheel. This is almost certainly a dream sequence based on the zoom out that we'll see in a couple shots and the fact that Rand looks surprised to be on this wheel. We finally get back to this shot of Leandrin talking to Egwene, who has been giving the voiceover. She says, it's not always the most powerful who write history, but it's the ones who survive. And I think that gives us some insight into how Leandrin views the world and possibly some insight into why she has made some of the, let's call them choices that she has made. Here we get Rand ready to kick some Shan Chan ass, showing up and facing Turok's guards and Turok himself. See the heron mark on Rand's sword? Here we get Turok pulling out his heron marked sword and notice that it's straight and not curved. That's what she said. I am really excited to see some of these fight scenes. But here's that zoom out of Rand on that wheel again. And again, it makes it feel very much like a dream sequence. But as we zoom out, there is what appears to be like a throne that somebody is sitting on watching Rand on the wheel. And again, this is likely a dream sequence, and I'm curious who would be sitting on that throne watching him. Let me know who you think it is in the comments of the video. Here we have an older guy fighting a Murdral with what looks like a flaming sword, the same type of flaming sword that we see Rand used often in the books. Now, if you look at the next clip, it looks like there is someone channeling fire from off camera. So there is another Aes Sedai and making her water sword catch on fire that would be my guess the lighting suggests that this scene is the same one that we saw land killing two fades from earlier so maybe this is the scene where moraine and land visit adelius and vandine or possibly varin and tomas instead perhaps this is varin channeling off screen but here we have matt stabbing downwards with something that looks a whole lot like his ashendari i don't believe that's what it is but it certainly looks like it and this next scene is of the gates of a town blowing up i'd love to believe that this is also matt's doing taking on one of the roles that he takes in the dragon reborn and using Aludra's fireworks to blow a hole in the gates. But finally, we get this shot of Rand standing before the Amarlin seat in what is likely the Sun Palace in Kyrian. Notice the rising sun above the throne. Now, it's interesting that the Amarlin seat travels with her own throne. But the scene is very reminiscent of the early scene in The Great Hunt where the Amarlin tells Rand who he is, and he's very defiant. Now, it's possible that Moraine is around or that Varen is as well. So hopefully we'll see them all together because I actually do want to see that scene. But that is the trailer. This video has been long enough. So I will have another video coming out with all the other news and analysis of this trailer and what I think about season two that will be coming out here very, very shortly. But what did you think of the trailer? Did it meet your expectations? Did it exceed them? Did it shatter them? Did it make you dread the show coming out? Let me know in the comments of the video. Also, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time related content. I'll have a lot coming out as season two approaches, so don't miss any of it. Make sure to hit the bell icon. Lastly, huge thank you to my patrons. This channel would not exist without you. If you'd like to support the channel, check out the link below for my Patreon. And if you like this video, you will probably like one of these ones here as well. So check them out. Thanks for watching. And until next time, peace out.